Jones Jr. is the USB heavyweight champion. This Ladies and gentlemen, the Silver Nugget, home of champions in North Las Vegas, Nevada, is proud to welcome Cedric Kushner's heavyweight explosion series. This bout is brought to you by Cedric Kushner Promotions in association with Nugget Promotions and by Corona Extra, La Cerveza Mas Fina. And this bout is sanctioned by the Nevada State Athletic Commission. This fight is 10 rounds of featured attraction in the heavyweight division. The judges for this fight, Davey Pearl, Glenn Trowbridge, and Dave Moretti, and your referee is Toby Gibson. Introducing first, fighting out of the blue corner. He's wearing the silver and black trunks and weighed in at 240 pounds. His professional record, 10 wins, two defeats, six KOs from Bristol, Tennessee. Here is Kenny Rock Smith. Smith. And his opponent, fighting out of the red corner. He's wearing the blue trunks with the black trim and weighed in at 234 pounds. His hometown, Grand Rapids, Michigan. His professional record, 17-0, five KOs. He is the current USBA heavyweight champion and currently ranked number seven by the International Boxing Federation. Presenting Buster Mathis Jr. Mathis. A scheduled 10 rounder, it's Buster Mathis Jr. and Kenny Smith, two big heavyweights. The undefeated Buster Mathis Jr. not defending his USBA title belt. This is a non-title encounter, but Buster staying busy here on the first weekend of February. And Kenny Smith comes out very quickly and throws a big right hand and quickly action is underway around one scheduled 10. Arnie Tokyo Rose called Humile ringside at the Silver Nugget in Las Vegas. Well, Yui, I think that's Kenny Smith's best shot here because, you know, Buster took this fight, as we mentioned, three or four days notice. I think he found out about it on Tuesday. A lot heavier than he likes to come in usually for a fight. And uh, Kenny Smith figures, okay, I'm going to try to take it to him early. Uh, Buster hasn't been in the gym very often. <laughs> Of course, his last fight was back on December 3rd against Gary Lane, who he stopped in eight rounds, not before getting rocked incidentally by the heavy-hitting Lane. Buster Mathis has shown a, a, a pretty good chin, although Kenny Smith, they're coming out two very big guys. Smith coming in uh, well over 230, and same with Buster Mathis Jr. Both yeah. in their 230s, and not body beautifuls, but both are looking to exhibit some nice skills here, at least in the first minute, minute and a half. And one thing's for sure, you know that Buster Mathis, again, being to reiterate, taking it on short notice, has no idea what to expect in Kenny Smith, what kind of look to get. Kenny Smith's a 10 and 2 fighter. He's got six knockouts. He's only 24 years of age. He just fought a rounder, though, in beating uh, veteran Danny Smiley Wolford down in Tennessee. Uh, that's actually a bit of an endorsement, the fact that, you know, he went eight and uh, and won a decision over uh, Danny Wolford. So he could probably fight a little bit. Other than that, there's no household names on his record to really give us an indication of where he's at. And he himself took off two years totally. He started boxing in 1990, he didn't fight at all in 91, 92, and most of 93. He's had four straight wins, though, since, uh, actually five straight wins since starting back into boxing in December of 93. Toby Gibson is your referee in this scheduled 10 rounder. As we've seen Buster Mathis a lot on the heavyweight explosion tour, and he's a gentleman who uh, will just crowd you and try to actually out condition you. As we said, he doesn't look like he's in the greatest shape, but he's a guy of constant pressure for Buster Mathis Jr. Buster not known for his punching power. He's got five knockouts in his 17 wins. Impressive stoppage, though, of Gearing Lane, but again, got rocked in the seventh round himself against Lane. Just when you thought Lane was going to come on, Lane called it a day and it had too much of uh, Buster. Coming inside 30 seconds, round number one. Kenny Smith in the gray trunks, black trim, and Buster Mathis Jr. Blue trunks, black trim. Pretty even first uh, three minutes of action. Not a bad round for Kenny Smith. You know, you have to wonder sometimes you want to stay active while you're waiting for a title shot. 
and sometimes you can walk into a small upset and uh, anything can happen in boxing. Buster looks like he's uh, working it a little better at last minute and a half, though. Getting a little sharp with his punches. A good action round for both fighters, as you mentioned, Arnie, that uh, Kenny Smith coming out quickly. And uh, Buster Mathis Jr., as we said, is certainly not a guy you put down on muscle and fitness, but uh, some very, very good skills. I, I, you know, for those who don't know, obviously comes from a boxing family. His father, Buster Mathis Sr., fought for the heavyweight championship against Joe Frazier. He fought Muhammad Ali. Uh, matter of fact, I gave uh, Buster Jr. an article yesterday uh, taking place after uh, Buster Sr.'s victory over George Chevalo. Um, started to come in on, as you mentioned, at the end of the round. Started to get the range. I saw the round even. Kenny Smith looking good the first half, but uh, Buster Mathis clearly now starting to show his class. Cole Warnick, probably. Well, yeah, right. Number eight by the IBF is Buster Mathis Jr. So a gentleman who uh, string a couple more wins together would be uh, in considered the championship loop, but anything goes in the heavyweight division. <sighs> Round two, scheduled for 10, Kenny Smith and Buster Mathis Jr. Now you mentioned the heavyweight division, and it's about to get even more complicated, uh, at least short term, to get a title shot because Axel Schultz, of course, is fighting George Foreman for now only the IBF belt. It looks like the BA is going to strip George for fighting Schultz. That'll put Tony Tucker and Bruce Selden in fighting for the vacant BA. Of course, Oliver McCall is fighting Larry Holmes. That's has got the BC title. Uh, ultimately, though, if there's three different champions, uh, it might make it easier for Buster to get a title shot rather than harder when there's only one champion out there. And, of course, uh, we understand in sometime in May there's another heavyweight that's uh, coming again by the name of Tyson. He might be getting back into the loop yeah. just a little bit. So, uh, some good action in round number two. Both fighters uh, not giving too much uh, space here. Very good source, by the way. It's only that Tyson's first fight might actually be against Greg Page. Oh, no, no. no. Mike Tyson, as we mentioned, uh, oh, we probably will be, be getting out of the Indiana State uh, Penitentiary in uh, May. It might take a couple months to get some sort of in shape, and then he's back on the trail. Should uh, put a lot of life into the heavyweight division. Always interesting to see how a fighter responds after a three-year layoff. Not just any kind of layoff. <laughs> Yeah, there's, I mean, there's a school of thought, though, that'll say that he was kept in bed. Slight interference there. <laughs> might have lost his step for a second, folks. We're back, as I was saying. Uh, school of thought that he might actually be in better shape on a three-year layoff while incarcerated than a fighter that has been out on the street partying and in some sort of uh, self-induced retirement. <laughs> That's true. So, uh... It'll be interesting to see, but right now, Buster Mathis getting some uh, good action from Kenny Smith. Is, uh, Smith is landing some nice shots inside here. That's where we're, usually Buster Mathis is most effective inside. And they just bang heads. They're fighting very close inside here, and somebody's going to come out of there. Toby Gibson ought to warn them about butting their heads like that. You, they just bang heads real heavily. Don't know how long these two big guys can keep up this kind of pace, but Buster Mathis has been known to keep the pressure on for many, many rounds. As we mentioned, he did take this fight on about three to four days' notice, so he's not in that kind of condition he likes to be when he takes a fight, but uh, uh, certainly looks sharper as the fight progresses. Buster, Good combination by Smith. Buster, of course, is undefeated and has maintained that status. Part of the fighter with nine lives. Exactly. Two no contests, though. Good uppercut by Matt. Good action, round number two. Both heavyweights uh, breathing heavy as they head back to their respective corners as we get a look at the corner of Buster Mathis Jr. I don't think today's the kind of day that Buster wants to be in there 10 rounds, taking the fight on short notice, fighting about 15 pounds over his ideal weight. Double six. And I think the, the point out, we were talking about a fighter with nine lives, of course, 
Buster had two no contest fights that could have been losses. The first was, of course, to Mike Hunter. Lost a 12 round decision. Hunter tested positive for cocaine immediately following the fight, declared a no contest. And, of course, a very controversial fight to Riddick Bowe, which was declared no contest when Buster was hit while on the mat. Uh, other than that, probably his most notorious win, Tyrell Biggs, 12 round decision there. Good win over Sherman Griffin. And a looking very good stopping Gearing Lane in his last outing. And I had him uh, back in November against Lyle McDowell. Certainly not a household name, but he did look sharp in that fight as well. Round number three, scheduled 10. Heavyweights, part of the uh, Cedric Kushner Heavyweight Explosion Tour. We are at the Golden, excuse me, the Silver Nuggets. Don't want to get my nuggets mixed up here in Las Vegas. <laughs> there's a Jerry's Nugget down the street. Uh, we're at the Silver Nugget. A lot of infighting, Arnie, as you mentioned, and uh, the heads are banging. Neither fighter, though, known historically for, for cutting. But nevertheless, you don't want to see heads banging like that. Good left hook by Mathis, you know, he's rocked Smith's own rock with legs from that left hook. Terrific action right above us. I think so. Joby Gibson keeping a close look as uh, they continue to, to bang inside. And uncharacteristic, un let me start that word again, uncharacteristically, Toby's letting them uh, fight on the inside more than he normally lets fighters. Buster keeping the pressure on it, Smith still thinks he's got his legs back just a little bit now. Smith's on a pretty good chin right now too, he's only been stopped one time, that was by Mike Cohn back in September of 1990. And Buster, of course, has never been stopped, although he was down and in trouble against Riddick Bowe. Big trouble. From Big Daddy. Stay underneath, Buster. Good, good work inside by Buster Mathis, Jr. And I had the pleasure of uh, watching the Riddick Bowe, Larry Donald fight with Buster after he had disposed of Gehring Lane on our last, uh, on one of the uh, December explosion show. And uh, always interesting watching a fighter like that with a fighter who's fought one of the featured fighters there. And, uh, you know, Riddick didn't look particularly great that night, let, you know, couldn't cut off the ring on Donald, and uh, Buster saw a lot of things that made him want to get back in there one more time with Riddick Bo. Does he do anything like his father? <laughs> I don't think so. <laughs> I, I really know. <laughs> I think there's some. I think there's some instinctive things that, that he got. But I think their styles are, are very different. <laughs> Smith still throwing some nice leather here as we come to the close of round number three. You've got to remember, Buster Mathis Sr. also weighed about 40 pounds more than Buster Mathis Jr. Another good left hook. Kenny Smith showing him a great chin. Buster continues just to march in, keeping the pressure on, and Smith running down slightly here with 10 seconds to go on round number three. Another good round for Buster Mathis Jr. after a sluggish first round. The last two, he's looked very, very good. And Kenny Smith has exhibited, as already said, a very, very good chin, but uh, kind of the not the kind of fight I don't, I don't think Buster was expecting, but he certainly getting a fight all he can handle from Kenny Smith right now. Back in the hole, Kenny, on the other side with bent knees. Throw me two right hands on this. Breathe for me, Kenny. Breathe. Come on, Stand come up straight on these ropes. Okay. There's your step over shot. The boy can't hurt you, Kenny. Mm -hmm. Not bad. So again, if I can hurt Kenny, feel good? Oh, yeah. Everything's fine. Keep that pressure first. Bend your knees and get up underneath. Action round number three. Did you hey, Yui, we're taking That's a look at body. action from the third round. Take body. a look. Much too wide trying to throw that uppercut from the outside there, and that's what's allowed Mathis to really get that left hook started. Because he was able to do later in the round. Round number four. Smith coming out quickly, sticking the jab right in Buster Mathis Jr.'s face. Kenny Smith's corner telling him they want him to double up on the right, start using a right-hand lead. His biggest problem, though, is he's got a, a habit of keeping that right hand very low, and Buster Mathis was landing that left hook all throughout the third round. And if uh, Buster was a little bit of a heavier puncher, he would have put down 
Kenny Smith, or Kenny Smith had a weaker chin. Take your pick. A lot of options there. Pressure by Mathis right in the uh, Smith's corner. They rush a little bit. Mathis breaks the clinch with a nice combination, keeping the pressure on. This is the way he does like to fight. Grab his opponent, not giving him any room, and in the meantime, getting off a number of shots himself. Give him up, okay. Nice Mathis more or less keeping up his pace by taking this fight a short notice of fighting every other month. He fought six times in 1994. Last fight, of course, as we mentioned, was a knockout of Gearing Lane back in December. And here he is in uh, February. Keeping that two-month pace going. by Buster Mathis to the right, to the right of the ribs. Oh, no, hold him, no, hold him, no, hold him. Come on, Buster, keep him up. Watch your head, watch your head. Mathis is keeping his head down and just shoot shots for the body. And that might be up and down. And that's what he needed to do. He was not following up with the body shots, and now he follows up with a good uppercut and left hook. And he's got Kenny Smith in a bit of trouble. The average boxing fan would probably underestimate Buster Mathis' skills because he doesn't look like he said in front of a fitness magazine, but he certainly has some really some terrific skills. Well, when you can win a decision over a veteran like Tyrell Biggs and Sherman Griffin, stop a, a, a gearing lane, you've obviously got some skills. He, by his own admission, tightened up a lot in the Riddick Bow fight. That's not to say that he's necessarily a fighter that can beat Bo or not beat Bo, but I don't think he... He looked close to 100 percent. Really keeping the pressure on Smith has not gotten out of the neutral corner for the past minute and a half, and Mathis just keeps on going blood from the nose of Kenny Smith. Kind of breaks your will after a while, does Buster Mathis Jr. Just keeps the pressure on. Inside 10, round number four. Another good round for Buster Mathis Jr. Smith getting some shots off the ropes and out of the corner, but uh, You're making this a judges tend to really like the busier fighter, and that certainly was Buster Mathis Jr. <laughs> Very good round for Buster Mathis, starting to work the body, finally following up the body shots going upstairs. Kenny Smith looking very tired, offered very little offense. So you got to shoot it in at a 45 when you feel Toby Gibson's going to start to pressure him, you watch, to start to get a little busier, otherwise he'll call a stop to this fight. Even though his gloves are in position, when, when, you, when you get that shot to the body, I want you to come back upstairs. Okay? Because he's trying to counter off that with his hand. If you come back upstairs, then you eliminate that. Okay, so you got me? Yeah. Take a look at fifth round action here, Yui. You know, Buster Mathis landing that left hook again and able to follow it up with some body shots. And that's that corner he kept Kenny Smith in the whole round. Kenny Smith almost had to pay rent there on fourth. <laughs> <laughs> round number five. Mathis comes again and puts his head on the sh uh, on the uh, chest of Kenny Smith and pressures. Smith cannot get any room to get off any decent shots. Needs to move a little bit, get away from him. And he was warned a couple of times last round to watch that head and the low blows, incidentally, by referee Toby Gibson. But the more tired Kenny Smith gets, the sloppier it's going to get in close. And again, another warning by Toby Gibson to keep the shots up. Junior trying to, uh, Buster trying to work the body and come upstairs. Sometimes his shots have been uh, deemed south of the board. There's another. Stop, stop. I think we might be getting a point. Toby Gibson could be the last one. Nice one. Hey. He is really pushing the patience of the referee Toby Gibson on those shots. Well, Kenny Smith, when he finally moved on the outside, shows that he has a jab. Why he's not using it against Buster Mathis to keep him off, I don't know. Mathis continues to block forward. 
keeping the pressure and short chopping blows. Not the kind that are going to put anybody in the deck. That's certainly go. on, looking good go. in the uh, eyes go. of the judges at ringside. No lateral motion whatsoever from Smith. If he would show Buster just a little bit of movement here, he could make a fight of it. You see, when he snaps the jab out there, he'll keep Buster off a bit. Mm -hmm. Has not done it enough. But he's back inside. Going to double up on the hook is Mathis. Mathis is job. Three unanswered left hooks from Buster Mathis. And again, the one knock on Buster Mathis has been if you land three left hooks like that in your heavyweight, you should have your man on the floor. Buster has five KOs and his 17 wins. Would certainly help his stock a lot more if he could build up a little bit more punching power. He's certainly shown all the punches uh, that you like to see from a, a good heavyweight, but as you mentioned, the, the, the KO power, the, he, he w usually wins his fight by mere attrition as he keeps on piling up the points. Well, that was the case in the Gehring Lane fight. It wasn't a, a clean KO by any stretch of the imagination. He just finally frustrated Gehring Lane. Lane almost pulled a no mas, if you will. Another low shot there. Toby took another note of that one. Ah! Oh! Round number five in the books. Definitely some uh, borderline shots landed by Buster Mathis Jr. as we get a look at his uh, his corner. But uh, I tell you, veteran referee and good one, Toby Gibson, took one of those looks, though, as he went by Kenny Smith's corner. And I've watched Toby enough times where he gave one of those looks as if to say, get something started here because I'm going to give you one more round. And if you don't have some kind of offense started, I'm not going to let you take a beating. There's no reason for it. And, and we take a look here, you eat action from round work. number six, and take a look for these three unanswered left hooks by Buster Mathis. And as we mentioned, you know, if he was a little bit heavier hitting, you'd expect Kenny Smith to go down on the floor. Okay. Kenny Smith, a veteran of 47 professional rounds prior to the last five we've just seen here. So. We head to the uh, back nine of this fight, so to speak, round number six. And I love Kenny Smith, only 24 years old. As we mentioned before, he virtually took off all of 91, 92, and then made a comeback starting in December of 93. He's got a five-bout winning streak. It's in jeopardy here today, you and uh, I would say double jeopardy at the moment. <laughs> Toby Gibson keeping a very close look. If you watch him right now, it's interesting sometimes just to watch the referee. He's strictly watching Kenny Smith's face as Buster Mathis is just throwing all offense, and there's nothing coming out of Kenny Smith whatsoever. Smith laying on Mathis right now. He's not really using that. To, oh, there's a low blow. There's a low blow. I think he has a timeout, and he's going to have to take a point from Buster Mathis for that. Mathis heads to a neutral corner. And Toby Miller will not take a point here. There you, there you go. Guys. Okay. He does take the point. He has to. And Kenny Smith has got up to five minutes to recover here. Gonna walk it off. Not a good feeling. So you look at Kenny Smith. We're midway through about 45 seconds into round number six. Kenny Smith still trying to get those legs back, clear it up. And we are set to go. An unintentional low blow, but certainly one that has been landed many, many occasions. Smith coming out throwing a double barrel. Well, right now. Huey Kenny Smith, let's, let's face it, that he hit him clearly low, but it wasn't a hard shot. He used it to his advantage to take a nice long rest and come out and throw a four-punch combination. And in the first four-punch combination that he's thrown since the third round. If you've ever worn one of those, uh, no, there goes Kenny Smith's mouthpiece. His mouth's wide open. We still got plenty of time. Toby Burrow holding on to the mouthpiece, trying to get Toby Gibson's attention. On ringside. If you've ever worn one of those foul, foul proof cups, you can basically take a baseball bat and hit it, and you're not going to really feel it. There's your mouthpiece uh, stoppage. 
Second time in round number six, the fight has been stopped. First time a low blow. Now the mouthpiece flying out now of Kenny Smith. Or is it? Is that Buster's Hello. mouthpiece? Buster's mouthpiece. Long mouthpiece. Wow. We are Maybe that tells action. us a little bit something about Buster's condition at this point. Maybe he's getting a little tired. We took an assumption that it was Kenny Smith's mouthpiece, when in fact it was Buster Mathis. Smith trying to get some room to throw that jab, and when he does, it usually is pretty effective. And Mathis always right in his face. Good combination by Kenny Smith. Like they're chopping down both punches. He does have a little height advantage here. Two rest periods for Kenny Smith in this round. I haven't heard of him, I'll tell you that. It's allowed him to get that jab moving again. It's a big pop Smith ready to go down and appears. Toby Gibson looking into the eyes and he's going to fall. That's for Gibson to jump in here, Yuri. Throwing shots back. Matthew says Smith in trouble. Nothing whatsoever there on the shots coming back. No legs right now on Kenny Smith. Matt is smelling the knockout here if he can keep the pressure on. But he might have gassed himself here. Good right uppercut. Starting all out. Buster throwing arm punches right now. He needs to shorten up on those shots and he can finish it. Round number six. Woo. Big round for Buster Mathis Jr. in between the low blow and the uh, missing mouthpiece. Kind of a weird round to score then. Well, I still, I mean, it's still a good round for Mathis. Right, that right uppercut would set right, Kenny Smith up for what looked like was going to be a knockdown or possibly a, a, a stoppage by Toby Gibson, but the bell saved him. A strange round altogether. A little bit of a vacation for a low blow. Then Buster Mathis loses his mouthpiece, low blow. Kenny Smith comes on, rejuvenated. And next thing you know, Buster lays that uppercut, the best fight of the punch in there. Crank that right hand back here and dig the hook to the body. And do it first, first, first. He got four rounds to win this fight. Okay. He just lost the point. Get on him with room. Can he get off them ropes? We take a look at action from round six. Buster Mathis throwing that overhand right. Take a look here. There's that overhand right from the other side. The punch that really set up, though, Yui. Was Kenny that Smith in that round was a beautiful right oh, uppercut Kenny. by Buster Mathis, and he just didn't have enough left to finish him. Round number seven, Smith trying to get some room to get some uh, leverage on his punches. Smith's right corner on his chest. Smith's corner telling him he's got four rounds to win this fight. But unofficially, other than calling the first round even, it's been all Mathis. And of course, Buster Mathis lost the point though in round number six for low blows. Smith trying to get the jab established. Mathis trying to keep the press pressure on as his, his style. Unofficially, I got a 59-55 at the end of six for Buster Mathis. Smith in big trouble in round number six, as we said, after that uh, beautiful uppercut. And Mathis not enough left to uh, put him away. And Smith's landed. You know, you got to talk about Buster Mathis' chin every once in a while. Smith's landed some clean shots on there. He's got some punching power. He's got six knockouts in his ten victories. And he's landed some clean shots on Buster, who's never been stopped, and keeps coming. Matter of fact, as a pro, the only time I've ever really seen Buster in big trouble was against Rudy Cole. Combinations by Mathis again has Smith backing up. And Smith clearly, though, fighting the wrong kind of fight to fight Buster Mathis. And again, we talk about Buster taking the fight on short notice. Kenny Smith didn't know who he was fighting either. You want to fight Buster, you got to show him some lateral motion. You got to keep that jab in his face, otherwise he's going to smother you like this all day. One of the body is Buster Mathis Jr. Quick snapping hook. And you don't want to jab off the ropes like Kenny Smith is jabbing. That's not going to hold Buster Mathis at bay. You want to jab double on that jab and then move for either left or right or whatever it is you want to get out of there and not take shots like that. Smith not showing much on his punches at all. Off the ropes all doesn't make any difference. Buster Mathis Jr. really working. 
Augusta presently number seven. IBF, I'm sure he'd like a shot. The winner of George Foreman and Axel Schultz. But what it might just take for Buster to get a title shot is he might have to fight somebody else in the top ten. Heavyweight division, where the money is. And of course, we don't want to forget coming up, we got Riddick Poe and Herbie Hyde for the WBO title on March 11th. Two very tired fighters here in round number seven as it comes to a close. Wide shot of the Silver Nugget Hotel and Casino in Las Vegas. Humalay along with Arnie Tokyo Rosenthal. We are bringing you the heavyweight explosion, a 10-rounder. We've just completed round number seven. And uh, Buster Mathis Jr. keeping the pressure on. And you, we'd like to take this opportunity to say hello to everybody watching us on the Pro Star Entertainment Network all throughout the United States today. Their favorite local establishments. Throw his ass off. Okay? Uh -huh. And when you get that shot in, come back upstairs before he grabs you. Quick, short punches. Boom, boom, boom. That's what we've been working on. That's what I want to see. If he's not cooperating, you make him cooperate. You got to take over in there, buddy. Seventh round action, Yui. Take a look for a right hand also. Coming over to top for Buster Mathis. He's been landing that all day long, but you got to give Kenny Smith credit. He's taking uh, the shots, round number eight. Rusher again, quick right hand by Buster Mathis Jr. Trying to get that uppercut in there. We heard his corner saying, get your shots off before you get tied up. Very unassuming kind of character though, Buster Mathis. Didn't come in parading his USBA belt. Will come in, take a fight on short notice, and, and as a... Uh, computer expert. Yeah, he's gone to school and uh, engaging young guy. Seems to just really enjoy the sport. We were talking earlier when I gave him that magazine article about his dad. His father didn't take good care of the memorabilia from his excellent career. And he's in the process of piecing it back together and finding all the pieces. And that's a slip. No knockdown. See if there's any uh, like water over there. Toby sending him back to a neutral corner. Toby Gibson going to be getting the town now. That was a strange slip. I think it was a combination of fatigue, a little bit of water on the mat. And another opportunity for Kenny Smith to take a breather. Yeah, and a good push by, uh, by Buster Mathis. And there's, boy, you take a look at Kenny Smith's jab, and you got to wonder if he's in proper shape for this fight and it prepares and he gets hit with that uppercut again by Buster Mathis. If you can only use that jab and stick and move and circle a little bit, that's how you've got to fight Buster Mathis. You can't sit there and let Buster pin you on the ropes and work your body like that. That's, that's his game. game. Yeah, exactly. He just loves to put pressure on any way he can. Oh, and a good, oh, and a good right hand drops Kenny Smith. He was working that body and finally the right hand just landed right. Kenny Smith's not getting up, Huey. He ought to know. He's gonna go up. He's Lazarus. He's up. Wow. Big body shot. Doesn't want to come forward, uh, no, Doesn't want no more of this. I think Toby Gibson should have asked him if he wanted to continue. And he's down again. I think this fight should be stopped. I think we've seen. Why is Toby counting? No reason to let this go on. No reason. Big mistake, Huey. Kenny Smith's taking a lot of shots. He's got no legs left. Very surprised for Toby Gibson to let this fight go on. Uncharacteristic of Toby as well. That's it. That's good. Toby's calling it a low blow timeout. I think it was a bad call on the part of Toby Gibson to let the fight go on. 
is right about this particular shot. It was the low blow that dropped Kenny Smith for the third time here. And this could be another, you know, Buster has a habit of getting involved in some very strange endings to fights here. And Kenny Smith in this particular fight has a way of surviving. And getting a lot of rest periods here. He's been knocked down twice legitimately this third time. It's been a case of another low blow, another point deducted, but this was all party already a 10-7 round for Buster Douglas. Toby Gibson says, I'm not going to give you all night. Let's go. Okay. I don't know. We don't have an exact time keeper here, but uh, time back in. The question is, uh, did it give Kenny Smith's head enough time to clear? And a fight that he's clearly not winning, and he's going to get through this round. All right, that body again is Buster Mathis Jr. And he's going to try to be quite valiantly off the road. Wow. This fight, uh, the variety certainly uh, is thinking about everything. Well, what would have been a 10-7 round, Yui, becomes a 9-7 round, at least unofficially on my cards. Uh, what would have been a, you know, a stoppage. If, but to me, Buster Mathis probably would have put him down the third time without the low blow. Kenny, you're going to have to step out of those ropes and tighten your elbows up and punch first. That's all I can tell you. You got two rounds, baby. You can make two rounds. Yeah, I can make, but he got me doing this. Yeah, I know he did. Ropes. That's the second time he didn't do it. Stay off them ropes Kenny, or hold them, son. Get off the ropes and don't let him bang down. Kenny, He's turn out of the... Kenny, listen to me. Well, we take a look at action here. Round number eight. We're going to take a look at the second knockdown, Yui. And again, it should be set up by a clean right hand by Buster Mathis that's going to put down... There it is, that uppercut. We head into the ninth round of this scheduled 10 rounder. Buster Mathis has really dominated this fight from the, about the third or fourth round on. And there's been a lot of uh, extracurricular activity, low blows, points deducted, knockdowns, flying mouthpieces. Well, in spite of losing two points for low blows along the way, I've got Buster Mathis way ahead on officially 78 71. Kenny Smith needs a knockout to win. He was complaining to his corner about the low blow. He didn't complain about the right hand to drop him, though. Smith, once again, against the ropes, where he probably should be. And Mathis keeping the pressure on. And what happens is that the reason that Buster Mathis may be landing some of these low blows is when you go to that uppercut, if Kenny Smith happens to walk in at the same time that Mathis is loading up on the uppercut, it lands in the wrong place. And you know what I mean. <laughs> A lot of people didn't expect it to go this long, I'm sure, including Buster Mathis. Again, if you're joining us late, obviously you're taking this fight. We found out Tuesday afternoon. Stop punching. Let's go. This has been a uh, potpourri of uh, boxing events here, I'll tell you that. Good shots. Kenny Smith trying to get some space to get his punches off, but hasn't really gotten the consistent enough to do any major damage. Very good overhand right coming off the right hand body shot. And he's bringing that left hand down of Kenny Smith, which is allowing Buster to go to work on the top with his right. I hold Nobody works harder in the ring than Buster Mathis Jr. He comes, he fights at three minutes, and he goes back and takes a run. Just keeps the pressure on. Pressure on. <laughs> you know, on the other side of the coin, short notice or not, he needs knockouts against the likes of Kenny Smith to become a matinee heavyweight. Fighters appear to be rather spent here with 30 seconds to go around number nine. Punch it out, let's go, punch it out, let's go. Let him go, Ken, punch it out, let's go. No fighter working real hard to break the clinch. And you know, Yui, 
you have to wonder. You know, Buster Mathis seems content. He hasn't really done much to change his style or anything that you can say that he's doing to create more knockout power. Oh. Happy to keep winning the way he wins. Round number nine as we follow Buster Mathis Jr. back to his corner. And with the way this fight is gone, you have to feel we'll see three more minutes of action. Taylor with the 10th and final. 10th and final round coming up. Already three knockdowns by Buster Mathis Jr., who currently holds the USBA title belt. Last round, clean touch. Don't lose it this round. Okay. So, so let's work this round. All right? Do you understand you've lost two points? Okay. So let's go to work. Let's get him out of there. Boom, boom, boom. You got to punch a combination. Let's go. Let's the 10th and final round from the Silver Nugget Hotel and Casino in Las Vegas. Kenny Smith and Buster Mathis Jr. Mathis Jr. in the blue trunks and on the attack. Kenny Smith in those gray trunks who's literally just been pounded but still standing after Nine rounds of action. And I've got it 88 to 80 in favor of Mathis. But Kenny Smith's corner telling him, hey, do you know he lost two points as if he can win a decision here? <laughs> but you got to give uh, Smith a lot of credit. I don't think many people expected him to be here in the 10th round. And again, going back to round eight, he was dropped twice. And unofficially a third time coming from a low blow. Very good call by Toby Gibson. In spite of the fact that the other man had been down twice already, recognized that the third knockdown was from a low blow. And that's probably the reason we're having a round number 10 at this point. Smith throwing just enough shots to have Buster Mathis Jr. something to think about. And if nothing else, for the young twin. Another low blow by Buster Mathis Jr. out of the hat here. Buster Mathis undeterred goes right back downstairs to work on the midsection. And if nothing else, if the 24-year-old Kenny Smith can go to business with Buster Mathis, it's a credit to his record. Doesn't do a darn thing for Buster Mathis Jr. at this time, as we mentioned at the top of the show. A guy who really does need to get the KO ratio just a little bit to, to, to get more people interested in watching uh, him fight. He certainly has a good story to tell, but he's got to put some KOs on the board to get more people interested. Combination by Smith there, waning seconds of round number 10. If nothing else, you would expect him to give a payback. That's the one thing I've been watching for, and Smith hasn't gone low on Mathis once. That is great. I like the old beanball or in baseball. You want the guy to stop hitting you low, boy, you throw one back and uh, he'll get the message real fast. <laughs> Kenny Smith hasn't paid back Buster one time. A couple seconds go here in round number 10. Smith still throwing some shots, but he has not thrown enough at, with enough evil intention to really on, do any major damage. Buster Mathis Jr. appears well on his way to a, another victory. And they're still going at it. Well, Huey, I wrapped that one up at 98.89 for Buster Mathis. Not a bad outing considering he found out about the fight on Tuesday. But as a heavyweight, you should be able to finish a Kenny Smith when you've got him down twice. Of course, he did drop him the third time, but he did it by going south of the border. Should be an easy decision for the judges at ringside. Is 
Buster and, Mathis Jr. Uh, pretty much, as you said, Barney in control. and uh, the They remain downs. obviously undefeated to go to 18 and 0. I believe Kenny Smith will drop to 10 and 3, and it'll stop his five bout win streak. We take a look at it. Uh, what, let's see if that fight, with, if that punch actually was low to Kenny Smith. Well, yeah, it was low, but it wasn't a lot on it. His and uh, is, you know. he bought himself another 30 or 40 well, second rest. Uh, not even enough to have another point taken away. Buster Mathis lost two points during this fight for low blows. Once in the sixth and once in the eighth after right. dropping uh, Kenny Smith twice. Again, I officially have it 98-89. It'll be interesting to see how the judges scored it. Because I had it as a 10-7 round in the eighth for the two clean knockouts and it became a 9-7 round with the point Mike taken Silver. away from Buster. Mike Silver. Buster. Mike Lang has the huh? official Mike decision. Silver. Mike Silver is in the books. It's just a win. That's all. Ladies and gentlemen, after 10 hard rounds, we go to the scorecards where we have a unanimous decision. Judge Davey Pearl scores the fight 94-90. Judge Glenn Trowbridge and Judge Dave Moretti both scored the fight 95-90. All for the winner, still undefeated, Buster Mathis Jr. A lot closer than you had it, and uh, I'd probably be leaning a little closer to your uh, scorecard than that, Arnie, but uh, we don't get paid to judge. Boy, and I thought I'd be controversial given Smith and Mathis even in the first round, and that was the only round I saw at all for uh, Kenny Smith. So Buster gets a late call and uh, comes in, gets the job done. Would have liked to score to KO, but that wasn't the case today. Kenny Smith hanging on uh, with some nice uh, mid mid round stoppages uh, and breaks, I guess. You'd say. And you, you know, we've got to talk about also. It's not just coming in late for this fight. It's at this point, can Buster Mathis get up for a fight like this? Uh, you know, he's, he's in the top ten. These bigger fights, I think, will really get him to where he wants to get. He came in 15 pounds over his optimum weight today. And, um, you know, he got the work in that I think he needed to keep, you know, sharp. But I think he needs to go in there now. I think to get that title shot, what it's going to take for him to get it, he's going to need to fight another top 10 contender. Our main event upcoming, it'll be Boris.